Greetings, everyone, and welcome again to Judgment Begins in the House. Today is uh, the third day of July 2024 on the Gregorian calendar. It is the 27th day of the third month of the biblical year, the Hebraic year, and I'm grateful again to be here with you. I've had some time um, just being obedient. And I'm looking forward to sharing. I do want to start by saying for all of us who are walking through firsthand this purging that the Lord is doing inside of the body of Christ, um, this purging that has to do with sexual sin and perversion and with child abuse, to stay focused on the Lord. He is in control. And it is my prayer for each one of you, for all of us, that we not ever allow the issues of man, the sins of men and women, um, even those uh, who we may have been aligned with, who we may have at one point or another considered um, teachers in our lives, on our spiritual walk, our faith journey, as these things are being exposed and as the Lord has had me release through various channels, for several years, our goal, our purpose is to keep our eyes stayed on Yeshua, Jesus. He is truly the author and the finisher of our faith. There isn't a man or woman alive who is who Yeshua is and must be in our lives. First and foremost, Christ and Christ alone. And so as these things are occurring, um, just two things I want to quickly say. The Lord um, has had me say very clearly and openly and as publicly as he's given me um, platform. We are not to defend wickedness. We are not to defend the wicked. And there are wicked things being done and that have been done that have not. I won't go there because I believe that was about to get all too off into my own judgment, if you will. But we know that confession that leads to repentance, leads to turning, has to be complete and total confession. It's why he's asked all of us to give him his, give him our complete testimonies. It doesn't change. It actually is still that expectation for true repentance and forgiveness that you have to have told the whole story, confess the whole sin. And it will always be that because God doesn't change. Two, in addition to not defending wickedness and the wicked. We are not to be offended against God, especially for those of you who have been victimized yourself or you have loved ones who have been victimized. Let's not give the enemy access to accuse God to us. You know, the way that he accused the Lord to Eve and she chose to believe the liar, the father of lies, rather than the giver of all life the one who sent his son Yeshua to suffer beyond human understanding on our behalf. So those are the two things I wanted to share to get started. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your faithfulness and that you are good and you do good. Our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions, we choose to bless the Lord, all oh, our soul. And all that is within us, we choose to bless you. So thank you for what you're doing in the earth. Thank you for what, for what you're doing in the body of Christ. Thank you for what you're doing in culture and society. And thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Have your way and let none of your words fall to the ground. We ask for your grace and mercy upon each one affected. Every family member every friend, every member of a congregation who's being affected. We ask for your grace and mercy upon them 
and that you would especially visit them with songs in the night so that you give them a song of joy and of peace as they are walking out this shaking that must happen so that the only thing that remains in our generation that is aligned and calls ourselves your house is pure and peaceable. Give us hearts of compassion, even for those who have wronged, done the wrong. Give us hearts of compassion toward them, lest we condemn them, hallelujah, outside of our authority, and therefore take on the same level of condemnation for ourselves and our families. We thank you in all things. Amen. So this word is a word from April, and I'm going to read this word because it's a promise for all of us, uh, because all of us were once prodigals, and all of us still have prodigals in our families and our um, close associates and our community. So this is a promise for prodigals. It's a beautiful word. But the Lord says, that there's a river running through it. And we'll talk a little bit about that at the end of the word, but I'm just gonna go through what the Lord said. Hear the word of the Lord. There is a river running through it, and there is a refreshing, refreshing coming to my persecuted ones in the earth. Prepare for a great harvest of ones tried by the fire being released into the harvest field to go, do, and be who the organized church, church has hindered. By my spirit, by the Ruach HaKodesh, says the Lord, these ones, they, will proclaim the gospel, demonstrating my power, says the Lord, and my authority in places the world has taken and the church has ceded to the enemy. For the ones inside those places, so the ones inside of the places that the world has overtaken and the church has ceded to the enemy, the Lord says, for the ones inside of those places are created in my image and it is not my desire that they perish. They shall, will, hear, and see the gospel from my persecuted ones who are an army of saints who will fear nothing. Fear not, for I am with them. So this is a beautiful word. It's filled with scripture. It's filled with promises. And this word has to do with those who are of the persecuted ecclesia, the pers persecuted house of God in the nations who the Lord says are going to come into the harvest, be prepared for them to enter into the harvest, which means they're coming out of the places of bondage and persecution. So in that, there's a spiritual promise and truth that we are to take hold of and prophesy into. But they are, be prepared for them to come into the harvest field, to go into the places that the world has taken and the church has ceded to the enemy. So these are places that churchdom and religion and piousness, um, even self-righteousness. I'm just speaking from what is true, scripturally what the Lord said, not what Maverick says, but also from my own experience and faith journey, places where we wouldn't go because we thought those places were beneath us or we thought those places uh, were sinners, even while we were yet sinning and walking ourselves in hypocrisy and self-righteousness. But these are places that have been ceded to the world and therefore in the vacuum of righteousness and justice, the enemy has taken over. 
The Lord is saying, prepare for the ones who've been persecuted, who will come out of their persecution, who will come out of their bondage and fear nothing. They will not fear man. They will not fear government. They will not fear what people call them on social media. They will not fear how their provision comes because they have, by the grace of God, endured and overcome true persecution. Not the persecution of cancellation while we still drive in our hundred plus thousand vehicles or live in our million dollar mansions. But these are ones who have suffered real persecution. And so they will have no fear of the very things that much of the ecclesia, much of church have bowed our knee to for comfort. They won't fear that. And they're going to go boldly at the direction of the Lord into the places that have been ceded to the world and to the enemy. Because the ones inside of those places, the Lord says, the ones inside those places, those places that we ceded to the enemy, the Lord says, are created in my image. And it is not my desire, says the Lord, that they perish. And what he's taking me back to is just this reminder. How can they know except they are taught? How can they hear except the truth, the full gospel is preached? How can they see and experience the goodness of God except his people go into those places? So hear this word and be encouraged by this word. Take this word into your secret place with the Lord and allow him to reveal to you. If you are in fact called at this time to go into one or several of these places that have been seeded by the enemy as one's going into the harvest because those in those places the Lord loves and he has need of us. He has work for us in those fields because he would not desire that the ones that we've left there perish. Take this to the Lord and trust him to guide your steps. He is doing awesome things in and through the body of Messiah, in and through his kingdom, the kingdom of heaven that is and will remain. And he is inviting us into the next level, if you will, of partnering with him, of the great commission that Jesus said that we are to go into all the earth to accomplish, to advance. So Lord, I thank you for this word. I ask that it accomplish all that you're sending it to in the hearts and minds of those who hear, that we set our hands and our feet to the purposes that you have for us at this time in this earth so that ours is a generation who again does not shrink back and does not ultimately die and fail in the wilderness because we determine that it's too hard or we'd rather remain comfortable in the things of the world. Let this generation be the generation who accomplishes what you've sent us to in this time. Let God arise and all of his enemies be scattered. And we trust you, Lord. Hallelujah. Have your way. In Yeshua's mighty name, amen. God bless you all. I pray that this word resonates um, as the Lord wills. And that we not only are hearers of his word, but that in seeking him and surrendering to him and taking one step at a time, that we truly become doers of the word. We'll talk soon, Lord willing. Take care.